What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we are gonna do Zoom versus Zoom. As you know, we tried to do it last week and uh, it fought us pretty hard. So we're going to do this all over again. I even wore the same shirt and the same hat so that I could use the same live card because that's what we're doing. So let's get into what makes the OCF Zoom different than the traditional Zoom to reflector. And let me roll this little bad boy over here. It's a B1X with a zoom reflector on it. I think I actually need to lower it down. It's pretty tall right now. Is that fine? People can see that? Cool. So this is the, I might as well just take it off. That way you can see them side by side. This is the zoom to reflector. And then this right here is your, hi everybody. This is your OCF Magnum reflector. So first and foremost, you can tell size wise, the OCF Magnum, much, much smaller. And that was the point behind making it, was to give you a reflector that was high output, but also incredibly easy to put in your bag and just travel with on your light. So the cool thing about this reflector right here is you can literally push it all the way back to the back of your flash head, and you have enough room that you could still put let me see if I have one of my protective caps over here. I don't, I think I have one over here, here we go. So what's cool is you can slide the reflector all the way back and then you still have room to put the cap on the front of your flash. So that's really, really nice because now you can actually just throw this into your bag and hit the road. You don't have to worry about, you know, any type of extra things to carry your reflector in. It's all right there in that one little section. So that's the first point of the OCF reflector or the OCF zoom reflector was to keep it small, make it easy for you to travel with really good stuff. It's got, and they, they're both pretty similar, but the finishes are a little different. Uh, if you look at the insides of both of these, and I think you can kind of see it, the facets are kind of square on both of them, but what's going to be different with your a traditional zoom reflector is it's a little more matted out. It's not quite as shiny as the inside of the um, OCF zoom reflector. The cool thing about this little bad boy right here is it's going to give you about one. It can give you up to 1.2 more stops of light output. So if you have a 500 watt B1X, it's giving you a little over a thousand watts. Uh, I can't really do the math that fast to go to 1.2, but it's giving you a little over a thousand watts of effective output, depending on the setting that this, you have this thing zoomed to. The OCI, or the regular zoom reflector also gives you a little bump in power, but it's, you know, it's made for a traditional domed style flash head. That's not to say that you can't use this with a flat front light. And just like we did with the Magnum reflector, I'm gonna show you the differences of using the Zoom 2 reflector with a dome and without a dome. So you can actually see the difference between the coverages. So kind of cool stuff. So, but once again, you're getting a lot more light output. So there are some advantages and disadvantages to both of them, and we're gonna cover both of those. Right now, we're kind of just going through the advantages of the OCF Zoom reflector. Just once again, size, light output, uh, cost. It's, it's a little more affordable than the Zoom reflector. It's a really, really good option for someone who needs to make up a little bit of power outside or inside. Uh, it keeps this light source relatively small, so the, the, the harshness of the light. I hate saying hard light and harsh because people associate the word harsh with bad light, and that's just not true. Bad light just a lot of times comes down to positioning or exposure. Um, but the nice thing about this is the size of the modifier is still relatively close to the 100 millimeter front of our flash heads. So you can kind of keep that same light quality while gaining some output. You also have the zoom ability of this. So you can take the, like let's just, for example, the front of a B1X. So the reflector that's inside of a B1X is gonna give you a 77 degree light beam spread out of the front. It's a really, really nice light, just right out of the box. Take a B1X, put it on a light stand, it's beautiful. The cool thing about putting this with a zoom reflector is with this, you're now gonna have the ability to control that between 50 degrees and 80 degrees. So it's actually will throw the light a little bit wider than your, your B1X will do normally. Uh, but you can also tighten it up. So you have one reflector that's giving you a lot of different variations on your light. So and we're gonna zoom them both here in just a minute so you can kind of see that. But that's kind of your throw. Whereas if you're using this with a dome and a pro head, 
you can actually get quite a bit, this is the zoom reflector, you can actually get quite a bit of variation. So if you look at the little tag on the top, uh, it's gonna show you that at a position of six on a pro head, you're gonna get a 35 degree light beam. So you're gonna be able to tighten that light beam up quite a bit. And then when you uh, bring it back to 10 on a pro head, you're gonna open this thing up to 105 degrees. So the coverage that you get out of a zoom two reflector uh, paired with the dome, I, you know what, it's hard to say that you're gonna get that coverage too with like a B1 with a dome just because it doesn't zoom to 10, uh, it stops off at eight. But if you were looking at this thing, for example, at a zoom position of seven, you're at 75 degrees. So at eight, my guess is you're probably getting close to that 80, 85 degree mark. Uh, so you can still, widen the beam out a little bit more than the head's gonna do by itself, which is kinda nice. So, but once again, compact, a lot of zoomability, light output, which is really, really great. And the cool thing is that it's optimized, the, the OCF zoom reflectors are optimized for the flat front light. So the way that these facets are aimed, uh, the, the dome, if you actually can, I don't know if you can kinda see the bell from the side, it has my little uh, counterweight is blocking me from turning this bad boy. So I don't know if you can see the bell from the side, but it has like these little ridges. And it's just because in the modeling of getting the light to zoom properly and, and give you a good output, we just, it's just what we had to do. We had to ridge it out to uh, capture all the light that it can. Let me turn this modeling lamp down a little bit because I know I think it's at full blast, it is. So it's at five, it's probably gonna flicker a little bit, but you can see what's cool about this is you have a flat front light and it's, ca it's hitting all those facets. It's capturing all of that light. And this is, this is kind of that setting, so you can see right here, uh, right around like a three-ish or four area. Uh, this is where you're gonna kind of gather as much light as you can gather and throw it forward because you're utilizing the majority of the reflector itself, which is kind of nice. Oh, I chucked my lavalier microphone. Super fun stuff. Make sure we're plugged in there. Cool, we're still good, Kate, on the sound? Good. Okay, just making sure. I'm a dummy. So, very, very cool stuff. So I'm gonna dim the lights down a little bit so we can actually see it zoom. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the, um, actually, you know what, let's do this first so you can actually see how this is going. I'm gonna zoom it at you and then we'll dim the lights off and then we'll zoom it towards the background just so you can see. Uh, yeah, just stay where we're at. Okay. I think it's fine. So you can kind of, I just wanna make sure I'm straight up. So you can see how it's utilizing the reflector in different places as we're zooming it. And this is what's gonna start giving you that variation. So there you go. So the cool thing is when you're right here, so like I said, normally, oh, I'm about to lose a glass plate. Like I said, normally your B1X is gonna give you that 77 degree beam spread. So you're still catching enough light right here on this outside facet that it's throwing it a little bit wider. So the light's coming from here, hitting this and going that way. This is coming from this side and going that way. So it's, it's all crisscrossing and going all over the place. And that's gonna give you that little bit wider beam angle than you would get with the flash head by itself. So very cool stuff, just so you can kind of see how it uses those facets. I'm gonna slide it back forward now. Very sticky collar, there we go. So you can start seeing it utilize that a little bit more. And then that's kind of, you can, you can actually see the, how much more power it gets once it starts utilizing a lot more of those facets, kind of cool. I think that's neat. So sweet, let me see if you guys have any questions while we're at Chitty Chat. What's up New Zealand in the house? Hey, hey, hey. Tell me if I'm missing anything too, Caitlin, because I think my restream's acting weird. So cool, let's kill this. Let's knock this down. Sweet. Killed the main, I wonder if I should kill the overhead. So the, the tough thing is it's a bright, I mean, I'm not gonna complain about a nice sunny day outside, but it is, it's bright out there. So we're gonna be fighting now with the modeling lamp, but we're gonna pump this bad boy up and see what we can do. There we go, that looks good. So let's slide this back. So just so you can kind of see coverage wise, let me move this laptop out of the way. There we go. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. And then we're gonna talk about some other cool things that the OCF reflector, uh, not the OCF, the normal zoom reflector does uh, that the OCF zoom just can't do. So here we go, this is zoomed all the way out. So you can see it's kind of pointed. You can see that hot spot right there. I'm just having a hard time focusing, isn't it? I put you on the wide shot. Oh, we're on the wide shot, gotcha. So you can see that it kind of has a hot spot like right there towards the middle. So as we start to zoom this bad boy back, you're gonna see that, that hot spot's gonna to start to diminish quite a bit, and it flattens out a lot. It's a real, it really diffuses itself out. You can, let's see, you know what, let's do this really fast. 
let's go here to this shot and let's, there we go, perfect. Uh, okay. Cool, yeah, we can go back to the tight shot so they can kind of see it. So you can see it diffuses out quite a bit and then as we start to zoom it back out, you can see the hot spot starting to come back to life. Right there, boom. So you can really point the light and, and get it right where you want it if you want to with the zoom. And then if you wanna smooth it out and diffuse it out, you can just pull it back and you can see you have a lot of control with the zoom reflector. And that was the, that was the point of making the zoom reflectors to give you that kind of control. I, you know what, honestly, I wish I had that information. Uh, it might be in the manual, I've never looked it up. Uh, it's not on our website. Uh, or you no, know, it's the numbers where it correlates is not, on the, is not on the website, but the actual zoom range is there. But honestly, off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. Uh, the, the tough thing about the, I'll show you the difference. One of the things that makes the OCF really, really cool over the, um, the traditional zoom reflector is the size and also the amount of positions that you can zoom it. So normally with a standard zoom reflector, go right here, you have this large collar right here. So you can see how much, how much that collar takes up in the room in the zoom scale. So even at four, like you're kind of starting to get deep into this collar area. So you're not utilizing quite as much of the, the reflector as you could. Whereas with the shorter collar of, and you can see the difference between the two, with the shorter collar of your OCF reflectors, you're gonna have more area to focus the light around in these areas where there's not necessarily a zoom scale. And that's why on things like the B10, we started throwing, and this is because of the OCF reflectors and stuff, on the B10s, let me see if you can see this, we started putting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven through the zoom scale because you now have access with the shorter reflectors and the shorter collars to utilize this front space. So the downside to that, uh, to the shorter collar, is there's not as big of a sticker space. I, I mean, I'm sure there might be some way that we could utilize it, um, but my guess is that's probably the reasoning. Uh, you can see how small the OCF zoom sticker is here. So it's probably harder to get the information that you would get on a much larger label here. So unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, I've never looked inside the manual to see if that information's there. I'm a dingbat, I probably should have. So, cool. Uh, but 50 to 80 is what you're gonna, what you should expect out of this reflector, which is kind of nice. So, cool. Downsides, modifiers wise. So. The OCF zoom is just this. There's no way to add grids or anything else. You could throw gels over it, but you're gonna have to do it with something like, uh, like a piece of gaff tape or uh, a clothespin C57, if you will. Um, and just kind of let it drape or diffuse it that way. There's no way to really grid it. It doesn't have, we don't make grids for it. If, if somebody does that you can slide in there, cool, but we don't have anything for that, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, maybe we can develop some something kind of like the grid and filter holder for the OCF that can kind of clip over the front and give you some more grid options, which would be cool. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. Now, talking about having the ability to use modifiers, that's where this thing really starts to shine too. So not only are you gonna get a large zoom range with this, and once again with the dome, is where this sticker is gonna be rated for, uh, and we're gonna show that with a B1X with and without the dome so you can see the difference in the way they're utilized. And then we'll put it on the back screen as well. So the cool thing about this is not only do you have this much wider zoom scale range, but you also have this lip right here that's gonna give you the ability to use, I think I put my grids back up. I did, I'm trying to keep things tidy. So you have the ability to use things like these grids that are made for this reflector. This is a cool little pack, it has the grids right here. Any of this information, if you wanna see any of these products that we're talking about in this thing, I put a link in the description. So you can go and check out what we've got going on there. Push that a little bit. So the cool thing is you have this lip right here and then you can just slide these grids right into place. Like that. And now you can grid out your zoom reflectors, which is really dope. So you have that ability. You got a little tab right here that tells you what your, your beam angle is. It also doubles as a good way of removing 
the grid from the, the flash head. So you have that, which is great. And then you also have the ability to use this little thing. So a lot of people ask about, um, do we make, like an, we have the OCF gel kit that allows you to, you know, kind of quickly click gels and grids and stuff onto our LED front flashes. So B1s, uh, B10s, stuff like that. And people ask all the time, do we have something like that for the D2s or like the pro heads? And that would where, be where this comes in. So you have these three little teeth, click it right over the front, bop. And now you have the ability, uh, you could put grids in behind, uh, you could put grids in here. Uh, the reason that you, and we've talked about this in the past and we'll probably do a more in-depth dive into this. So the reason that you would put your grid here now, as opposed to here, is you always want the grid to be the last thing that the light hits. So if you're diffusing the light out, if you put the diffusion in the front, the diffusion in the front is what becomes the light source. So with the grid staying in front, you can keep the grid in the front and it keeps the light source pretty tight. And once again, we'll do that another day where we kind of dive in why you want to put diffusion before the grid and not after but this keeps you in that world. So you can put, you can cut whatever gel or diffuser you want in there. You can slide it right into the side like that. Apparently I can't do it. So you slide it right in the side and then you can shoot through the grid still if you want to. So it's a really, really cool little modifier. I think if we came out with something like this for the OCF, like Magnum and Zoom would be really, really cool. That way you could just do some fun stuff with it, but that's neither here nor there. So that's another place kind of where the OCF uh, has a little bit more of a disadvantage than your zoom reflector is going to have is modifiers and beam angle. So let's talk about beam angle now. So let's throw this on here and we're going to do the same zooming that we did just a second ago, but with this reflector and we're going to see how it utilizes the zoom uh, with the flat front. And then we're going to do the same thing again with the dome so we can see the difference there. So let's push the reflector out pretty far like you would expect on the oh i turned that power all the way up let me get that back down so we can see it so you can see here that it's doing a pretty good job of using the reflector let me get right back there but you can kind of see a couple little spots like here like around the edges where it's not quite getting the light in there and so you can see it's not utilizing the reflector as we start to zoom it back you can see it right here, it starts to be a little more effective. And that's right at the area that the um, the flash head is coming right towards the bell, right where it's starting to reach right here at the bell. That's where you're gonna start seeing it utilizing a lot more of that. So, but you can still see it's not, it's not perfect. It's shooting light past this. So you're not gonna get that full zoom range, but then as you start to pull, go through the system, just like you would expect, as the light head passes some more of the reflector, it widens out quite a bit. Still does a pretty good job of utilizing the reflector. And that's to say, like if you have a B10, something that you can't put a dome on, it still does a great job using the zoom reflector. It's just a little more efficient whenever you use a dome head. And we're gonna, sh we're gonna demonstrate that here in just a second. But once again, with a flat front, you still are using quite a bit of the reflector. It's a still a very effective reflector. So very cool stuff. So let's go domed. Let's dome it up. Cool. So same thing. We're going to stay with a B1. We're actually B1X. Uh, and we're just going to do it with a dome now. So this is the dome attachment. This it works for B1s, B1Xs, D1s and D2s, and even the D2 industrial. So which we will cover probably next week so I'm <clears throat> sorry I've also been fighting a cold so pardon me if I have to kind of cheat away and sip some water so cool let me take this off hey Caitlin can I hand you this cool yeah hang on just a second go for it just put it on the wall thank you so much sweets so let's go here with the dome and I'll take that one down here in just a second too, so you can kind of see how it, once again, it lines up on the wall. But I want you to see how the dome changes the utilization of this reflector. So once again, this reflector was designed around using it with something like a pro head. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you buy a pro head or a pro plus head, one of these comes with it. So they were designed specifically for that. So using a dome where, I mean, technically, yes, the flash tube isn't out here, but we're still using opaque glass. So it's still gathering a lot of that light and throwing it a little more 180. So let's do this. 
<clears throat> dome on. Oh, second step, flash on. So cool. Here we go right off the jump. You can see, and this is pushed out kind of far, so just the very edge of the dome is going into utilizing the front of the flash, but watch as we start to come forward. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I went the wrong way. Look at that, starting to utilize a lot more, a lot more, and it stays, it stays utilizing quite a bit of that reflector and doing it a very good job of staying pretty even on the exposure there. So a lot more efficient. So the only place that, that you're seeing the black is actually the ring of the flash. It's actually the housing of the flash head itself. So that's what that little bit of black is. So you can see it's doing a really good job of utilizing way more of that reflector than it was with the, the flat, flat front. And that's once again, not to say that you can't use the flat front with it, it's just that this is a little more efficient. You see the zoom out, still doing a great job of utilizing it. The black ring that you're seeing is now the actual housing of the flash coming into the, the zoom. So it's gonna utilize a lot less, but still does a great job. You see a lot of light still hitting right here on the edges, but also still kind of kicking back right here. So some, some of this light right here from the edges hitting the reflector, still doing a good job of utilizing it. So, but you can see that right there is pretty wild. How much, uh, when we had the flat front, like right around here, we were starting to get some like dark banding where the light wasn't quite catching all those facets. So very cool stuff. Let's turn it this way and we'll do a comparison with both. And you can kind of see how it zooms now. Let me kill this overhead light. There we go. Sweet. Tight shot? Uh, yeah, you can go to the tight shot. And don't worry, I'm gonna come over there and see if you have any questions too in just a second. I just, uh, we're kind of rolling through these lights and uh, there's a lot of switching out and I don't want to lose my train of thought. So. So here we go. You can see it's not, it doesn't quite have the hot spot that the OCF has. Uh, this is mostly due to the fact that it's, um, it's utilizing a lot more of that reflector right out of the jump. Let's see if I can aim that down a little bit more. There we go. But you can see there's really not much of a hot spot whatsoever. And then as you start to zoom it back, you can see it diffuses out quite a bit. You know, maybe, maybe do go to the wide shot just so you can kind of see it not changing too much. So, uh, Sorry, we have a lot of light leak coming in from right here. Here, let's just do this really quick. Stand by for V-flap. You got it. Yeah. Bring this V-flap in here, see if I can cut out some of that. Might be the other window. I think it's the window behind the door. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, totally. We have, a big, we have a big window in the door back there and when the sun hits it the right way, it just freaks out a little bit. But I still think it knocks some of that down. You can kind of see it. Let's get a little bit closer. Maybe that'll help. So that's zoomed all the way out. So that's about as much of a hot spot as you're gonna get with it, with the dome. And then as you start to zoom it back in, you can see it diffuse out quite a bit. So if you go to the tight shot real fast, Kate, you can see that there's really not much of a hot spot. You're kind of moving it around so you can see. It does have a vignette. You can see the edge of it. There is an edge. And then as you start to zoom it out, look how look at that edge just feather away. Beautiful. Really, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. So let's do that with a flat front really quick, just so you can see how that works. So once again, with the dome, we had a minimal hotspot. It was still pretty even edge to edge, but it diffused out quite a bit. Let's, I'm gonna think I'm, gonna, I think I'm just gonna do this handheld. So if you just wanna roll this out of the way, maybe. Sure. I think I can do it handheld. I'm, I'm betting on my abilities, which are probably gonna fail me. So cool. So you can see here at a zoom setting of four, you have a little bit more of a hot spot. You can actually kind of see trying to point my finger, like right in here. Oh, gotcha. Oh, that's right, you're on the, you're, we're in the wide shot. So you can see there's definitely more of a hot spot here. You can kind of see it right there. And then it still vignettes out. It, it tapers nicely. I know that I'm making cool hand puppets and stuff like that. Look, it's a dog. Woof, woof. Um, <laughs> what can I do? Um, but, Pretty solid hot spot right there, and then it, it still feathers out really nice, but a very obvious vignette right there. Yeah? And then as we start to zoom this bad boy back, you can see it feathers out nicely. It still has a little bit more of a hot spot, and that's because 
the um the flash head is is way more direct <laughs> it's like these weird like spooky shadows that I'm doing. <laughs> sorry i'm amusing myself uh but you can still see you have a little bit of a hot spot right here uh this little shadow finger pointing thing works out pretty well a little bit of a hot spot right here and then but it tapers it feathers really smooth so you're still getting a lot of that nice feathering action that you were getting from the dome even with this but you still have a little more pointed light right here so these are just the kind of things you have to think of when you're choosing the modifier whether or not you're going to use this and that's to say also the, you know if we put this onto a b10 let's just do it really fast you're going to get that same hot spot because you're still utilizing a flat front flash so you have to remember that and then once again with the b10 you can't change out the dome so there is no dome option here with all the amazing things that the b10 can do there is no dome option so we're powered up so you can see, uh, and I'm just going, I'm going to keep it on daylight balance just so you can tell the difference between the flashes. So we're daylight balanced on this. So you can still see there is a bit of a hot spot right there, zoomed all the way out, zoom position of one, right? And then as we start to pull it back, feathers out really, really nicely, but there's still, it's not quite getting rid of that, that main flash spot that's right there. So you can see on the wide shot, that main flash spot that's right there, it's still there, but the rest of it tapers nicely. <coughs> Pardon me. So really, really nice stuff. Very cool. So that's it with the flat front. So just know that if you're gonna be utilizing one of the flat front flashes with your uh, zoom to reflector, that you are indeed gonna have a little bit of a hotspot. That's okay. It's just one of those things that you have to be aware of and you have to know that that's what you're going for. And you could change that up. You could probably hit it with a little bit more diffusion uh, and try to knock that down totally your call so but very very cool stuff let me see if you have any questions for me you want to roll it in place yeah, yeah let me roll over i gotta just move these grids and stuff pardon me everybody i'm gonna take a, a quick swig I'm, i don't have my, my water bottles empty so i have to go for the the soda pop but still better than hacking and Hello. hacking and coughing what's up everybody um Cool. Oh, Dallas is saying he loves the B1X and B10 Plus kit. Modifiers are game changers. They really, they, they mean the world. They do the best stuff. Uh, what's up, everybody? Hey, everybody. What's up, Mr. Shadow? Um, very creepy in a cool way, kind of mysterious. New Zealand in the house, what's up? Hey, everybody, can you list where the, okay, that's where Alara was asking about the, the Zoom settings earlier on the OCF. Um, could you, do you know how to pull up? Um, yeah, so just run to profoto.com. I'm gonna have Kate look and see if inside the um, if inside the user manual we can actually get those numbers. Uh, you're you're already here. Here, just just oh, right here, and just tab oh, tab me you. up. There you go. Okay. Um, so Caitlin's gonna check that really fast while we're kind of chatting and, and sh slowing down for the rest of the day. But really, really good stuff. Let's see. Just correct? Yeah, just profoto.com. So really, really cool stuff. It's, and these are just about trying to help you understand what is the right modifier for the job. Or uh, you wanna go to uh, light shaping tools right there? Nope, here, give me just a second. Yeah, yeah. I can do this a little bit faster. So the main thing about this is just, you wanna go to the wide shot real quick so I can yeah, yeah. chat while we're doing this. So it's really just about making sure that we can talk about these modifiers. You can understand what makes one, you know, really in its most basic form, the OCF zoom reflector different from the, um, what makes it different than the zoom two reflector? Because it's one of those things that people wonder about all the time. Uh, we've got this bad boy open. I'm just trying to see if it's got a zoom scale on here. Um, so far I'm not seeing one. It's just kind of showing you on the compatible flash heads. Let's just scroll through. Okay, cool. I don't, the, the, the manual really only shows you how to use, how to use them on different flash heads. It's not really, it doesn't look like it has any information specifically for the zoom settings. No, it doesn't say that. It just really tells you that it's, it's made for maximum of 1000 watt second flash heads. All good. And whatnot. So, hey everybody, what's up, what's up, what's up? So once again, this is really just comes down to 
how to choose the right modifier. Do you need grids for a reflector that's gonna give you a little bit more output? Then maybe you need to start going and thinking more along the lines of getting the zoom to reflector because you're gonna have the option to put grids on the front, you're gonna have the grid and filter holder so you can throw gels in there and then still stack it with grids. So you have those options. Downside, this is a little bit bigger reflector. So it's not necessarily gonna be as portable as something like the OCF reflector is going to be. Other downside is is the OCF zoom or not the OCF zoom, the zoom 2 reflector is more efficient with the dome setting or with uh, the the dome attachment. So if you have a D1 or a D2 or B1 or B1X, you're gonna have the option to put that dome attachment on there. But if you are a B10 user uh, or B10 plus user, it, you can't. So you have to remember that there's a chance that you're gonna have a little bit more of a hot spot, even when you're diffused all the way out. So thinking about that kind of stuff, whereas you go with the OCF zoom or the OCF zoom reflector, yeah. I'm saying zoom so many different times that I can't keep up with all my zooming. So you go with the OCF zoom reflector, you're gonna have a reflector that's made for your flat front flash, so you're not gonna need a dome attachment, which is dope. And, and again, you don't need a dome attachment to use a zoom to reflector. It is just more efficient that way, cool? So the upside for the, the OCF zoom reflector though is it's made for flat front flashes, so it doesn't need that attachment, period. Downside is you're not gonna have any light shaping tools that you can stack on top of it. So pros and cons to everything, it just is what it is sometimes, but really, really great stuff. Then you're gonna also with the OCF zoom reflector, you're gonna have the ability to pack it down with your flash head and, and hit the road with it. So you just take the flash head, uh, unclip it first before I look like a total numb skull, which I generally do pretty well on my own. And then you're gonna be able to push that in there and you can travel with it on your flash head just like this. Uh, I've done many, many an airline flight with uh, my OCF zoom reflector packed in my bag on my B1s or my B10s. And I've never, as you can see, it's not dinged or dented or anything. It does a really, really good job. It's pretty, it's pretty rigid as is, but having that extra little bit of rigidity in there and then Honestly, every once in a while, I'll throw like a piece of cloth or some napkins or something in there just to kind of give it a little more rigidity. And I think it works well, but I've had no issues with it. <coughs> Pardon me. But yeah, easy stuff. Any other questions? Hey everybody, just haze. Hey everybody, what's up? Cool. Well, you know, I really, really appreciate everybody coming and kicking it with us today. Once again, this is really just to kind of give you an overview of what makes the OCF zoom reflector different than the zoom to reflector. And that now giving you the ability to arm yourself with the right information to make the right choice whenever it comes to picking a modifier that you might just want to use or rent or something that you maybe you're looking at adding to your arsenal. <coughs> so once again, remember that you can always rent these things. You don't have to go and just jump off a cliff and buy everything right off the dump. You can see if you know, this is more your style or that is more your style. And then once you find yourself using it all the time, you know, that's the time that you, you make that splurge, you make that jump into it. So it's not one of those things that you have to own every single modifier in the entire world to be able to utilize them. Sometimes you just need it one time and that's when you can rent it and that's fine. That's why we built the rental infrastructure that we've built around the world. So that when you're traveling or if you're just in your area and you need something, you have a chance of getting it. So, and we're adding to that all the time. So now you know what makes the OCF zoom different than the zoom two reflector. Uh, you're armed with a little bit more information. This video is gonna live here on YouTube and on Facebook, so you can always come back and reference it if you want to and see if maybe there's something that you missed or if you were looking for a little bit of a piece of information uh, that maybe you forgot, it's here and you can come back. And then you can also just hit me up and DM me. I'll be more than happy to answer. DM Pro, the, uh, the rest of us at Photo. We're always more than happy to answer any of this stuff. So in the meantime, <coughs> pardon me, I'm dying. Oh, man. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome rest of your week, a killer weekend. We'll be back next week with more fun stuff, uh, doing some shooting, and it'll be a good time. So have a good one. Peace out, everybody. Later.